Hello and welcome to the 2024 Santa Cruz County Point in Time Count Training. Thank you for joining us in this important effort to improve the understanding of homelessness in your county. The count will be conducted in two primary phases, separating the count and survey efforts. This training is focused on the count portion, which will take place on January 25th, and the survey training will be conducted at a later date. We will share additional details regarding the purpose and methodology as this training continues. In this training, we will cover the following. The purpose of the point in time count. The definition of homelessness used for the count. How to conduct the count. And reminders and next steps. There are several reasons why a point in time count is conducted. The U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development or HUD requires all communities that receive federal funding for homeless services to conduct a point in time or pit count of all persons experiencing homelessness during the last 10 days of January. Counts of people who are unsheltered, meaning living outdoors, in vehicles, tents, or other similar locations neither intended or fit for human habitation are currently required every other year. In addition to meeting federal requirements, the point in time count provides valuable data for community understanding of homelessness. Data on the extent, prevalence, and reasons for homelessness is also invaluable for local planning efforts and community understanding. This figure shows the different components that the count includes to make sure all people experiencing homelessness are represented in the count. You will be participating in the general street count, which is highlighted in the middle box on this slide. The general street count is a visual count of people who are currently unsheltered and will take place during the early morning hours on January 25th, before people begin moving through their day and before people staying in shelters leave the facility. Timing and coordination are important to avoid duplication, so areas surrounding shelter locations should be counted first. Route timing is important and should be considered in pre-planning efforts. Rural regions and non-shelter areas may also be subject to special arrangements. We will discuss how your team should prioritize counting locations within your assigned count area, such as shelters, later in this presentation. The other components include the shelter count, the youth count, and the survey. The shelter count collects information on the number of people staying in shelter programs across the county. The youth count focuses on counting unaccompanied young people under the age of 25 and is typically done around 3 p.m. to 7 p.m. This is not available for general community participation at this time. Finally, the survey component is typically conducted in conjunction with the general street count. Surveys are conducted with a representative sample of people experiencing homelessness across the county and provides us with a more detailed understanding of the homeless experience and the diversity of the population and its characteristics throughout the region, including information on veterans, families with children, and people experiencing long-term homelessness. We have made changes that are designed to ensure the safety of all participants in the count. They include in-person deployment sites, the pre-assignment of the majority of pit routes or census tracts, emphasis on outreach teams with lived experience guides and direct service program staff, surveyor email and phone number for post-count data validation purposes, the inclusion of the smartphone app Survey123 to be used for documenting observations of the team, and the team captain or one designee will be the operator of the Survey123 observation app. The general street count is a visual count of people residing on the streets, in parks and open spaces, in tents, in vehicles, in abandoned buildings, or in makeshift shelters constructed of tarps, cardboard, or other materials. The street count will be conducted while people are still in public shelters in the morning, which will help us have an unduplicated count of everyone experiencing homelessness that day. To avoid duplication, we ask you to count the areas surrounding shelters first. As a reminder, volunteers will not be paid for their time, nor will volunteers be reimbursed for their mileage. Guides, who are individuals who have previously or are currently experiencing homelessness, will be paid a cash stipend upon completion of their count route. Here you can see what to expect on the morning of the count. Guides and volunteers will arrive at 5 a.m. and the goal is to have you out the door and in the field as soon as possible so that your team has adequate time to cover your route. You will first access the pit count survey on the Survey123 app. You will be asked to input your track number which you will receive via email prior to the count, along with your phone number and email address for post count data validation purposes. We expect all teams to finish their routes by 9am. Please call us if you think you need to be out any later than 9am 
or if you need additional help to complete your assignment. We strongly encourage you to conduct as thorough of a count of your assigned maps as you can. There are two different types of participants on each team during the general street count, volunteers and guides. This slide outlines the differences between guides and volunteers. A guide is an individual who has previously or is currently experiencing homelessness and uses their knowledge to identify individuals experiencing homelessness during the general street count. They will guide their team towards locations in their assigned count area where individuals experiencing homelessness are likely to be seen and will help distinguish between safe and potentially dangerous situations. Guides are compensated for their time and contributions to the count in the form of a $20 per hour cash stipend. A volunteer will provide consultation and support in team decisions. They will be in charge of transporting their count team through their assignment and will help ensure that full coverage of the map is achieved and communicate with pit count organizers as needed. Please note that volunteers are not paid for their participation in the count, nor do they receive gas or mileage reimbursements. Teams should note that because we are covering the entire geography of your county, there may be instances where the guide is not personally knowledgeable about the specific route the team is covering. However, guides are still able to draw on their first-hand experience of homelessness to help identify potential locations or persons based on previous experiences and signs in the environment. If a team is confused on whether or not a person should be included in the count, we ask them to collaborate within their team and make an informed decision. All team members are in charge of ensuring the methodology is being followed and should designate one team member to be in charge of marking the tally sheet and one team member responsible for tracking the team's coverage of their count area. The next set of slides will outline how to use the data collection forms that you will use on the morning of the count. Each team will be able to select specific routes and be given maps of those routes which will be emailed to you prior to the count. If there are issues printing the map, there will be a few locations across the county where physical maps can be picked up. Your route will be outlined. Please stay within the tracked border. Often, the boundary of your route is a street. If the borderline is a street, count people on the inside side of the street, or the side of the street that connects with the rest of your route. If there is someone moving back and forth across the street, you should count them. Please cover all areas. The count persons are persons who are experiencing homelessness or living in a place not meant for human habitation. This includes tents, vehicles, parks, sidewalks, etc. Be sure to drive or walk down every street. Count on both sides of the street unless it's a route border. Look for open areas. You may need to get out and walk. You decide the route you take. That route may depend on traffic or where shelters are located. Be sure to cover areas around shelters first. It is a good idea to put an X on streets and areas once you've covered them so you don't count them twice. If you are assigned to two contiguous maps, be sure to outline a route that will easily take you from one map to the other. You'll need to download an app called Survey123 in order to access the observation form. Once you've downloaded the Survey123 app, you'll need to enable your location settings. If you are on an iPhone, you'll open up your settings, scroll down to Survey123, select Location, and select Wall using the app. Make sure precise location is enabled. On Android, you'll open up your settings, go to the Personal tab, select Location, and make sure it's on. If you can't access the observation form, there may be an update available for it. Once the update is made, the observation form will become available. The app will also ask you to enter in your login information. Please select Continue without signing in. When you first open the observation form, you will be prompted with a question asking for the number of the census tract you're currently working on. You will need to open a new observation form for each census tract you cover. After entering in your census tract number, the app will ask you for your phone number and email address for post-count data validation purposes. After that, scroll down to the observation location area. Select the optical site symbol, which will pinpoint your location for your upcoming entry. You must select the optical site symbol for every entry so your location is consistently recorded. Once you do that, scroll down to the first question, which asks you whether you'd like to submit a confirmed or suspected entry. Let's look at some examples on how to fill out the tally sheets. You will fill out one line per person that you see. In the first example, you observed one individual who appeared to be in their early 30s and was on the street. 
You start by bubbling in confirmed, under confirmed or suspected. Next, you would bubble in individual, no children present, under individual or family. Under dwelling or vehicle type, you would bubble in street or outside. Under age, you would bubble in 25 to 34. To move on to the next entry, press the plus icon located under the last question near the bottom right corner of your screen. Please note that for the purposes of the count, a family is defined as one adult present with a child under the age of 18. In the next example, you observed a family of three that included two adults who appear to be in their late 20s and one child under the age of 18 on the street. You start by selecting the bubble that says confirmed under confirmed or suspected. Next, you would bubble in family under individual or family. Under how many total family members, you would type in the number three. Under age, you would start with the first person and bubble in their age. After bubbling in the first person, below the section age, there is a forward pointing arrow with a one of three to the left of it. You would press this arrow and again bubble in the age of the next person. After bubbling in the second person, you would press the forward arrow again and move on to the third person. After bubbling in the age of the third person, under dwelling or vehicle type, you would bubble in outdoors. You would then press the plus button near the bottom right corner of your screen to finish the entry and move on to the next one. Listed here are some ways to identify vehicles that are housing individuals. We want to maintain a respectful distance, so please do not walk up and look inside the vehicle, knock on vehicle doors or windows, or shine flashlights into the vehicle. Instead, here are some signs to look for that can indicate whether somebody is living in the vehicle or not. A vehicle with windows that are fogged, partially open, or blocked. Electrical connections or generators. Screens or window coverings. Items inside and outside of the vehicle, including household items, bags, clothing, etc. Sounds of music or talking coming from inside the vehicle. Or that the vehicle is in a known safe parking location, which may be designated on your map. If you find a car, RV, or van that looks inhabited based on signs detailed in the previous slide, but you cannot determine how many persons are residing in the vehicle, you start by selecting Suspected under Confirmed or Suspected. Next, under Dwelling or Vehicle Type, you would bubble in Car, RV, or Van, depending on what type of vehicle it is. Under Is this sighting part of an encampment? You would bubble in No. Additionally, we ask that you record the last four digits of the license plate of each vehicle you include in the count. The reason we request that you record the last four digits of the license plate number is to help us avoid count duplication. Vehicles move quickly, and this helps ensure vehicles are not counted twice. The field for listing the last four digits of the license plate number is located below the section entitled Dwelling or Vehicle Type. After that, you would submit the entry by pressing the plus icon near the bottom right corner of the screen. We take the privacy and confidentiality of people experiencing homelessness seriously. Please note that vehicles are not traceable or able to be tracked down using these numbers. Additionally, these numbers are only for use by the research consultant team from Applied Survey Research and will not be shared with any persons, organizations, or authorities outside of ASR. An encampment is defined as two or more tents or makeshift shelters that are grouped together. In this example, you observed an individual who appeared to be in his early 20s outside a tent. You also observed a tent directly next to his with an individual who appeared to be in his 70s standing outside of that tent. You start by bubbling in confirmed under confirmed or suspected. Next, under individual or family, you would bubble in individual. Under dwelling or vehicle type, you would bubble in tent or makeshift structure. Under is this sighting part of an encampment, you would bubble in yes. Under age, you would bubble in 18 to 24. At the bottom of the survey, there is a plus button you can press to add another individual. It is located near the bottom right corner of your screen. After adding in the next individual, repeat the same steps you just did, except under age, you would bubble in 65 plus to indicate that you believe the second individual is in his 70s. To complete the entry, you would press the plus symbol near the bottom right corner of your screen. In the second example, you observed three tents together, but you don't see any individuals. In this case, you start by bubbling in suspected under confirmed or suspected. Under dwelling or vehicle type, you would bubble in tent or makeshift structure. Under is this sighting part of an encampment, you would bubble in yes. After that, 
you press the plus button located near the bottom right corner of your screen to indicate another entry and repeat these steps for the next two tenths. Now that you understand how observations are made within Survey123, we highly recommend testing the application while out and about prior to the count. Location data is critical, so please make sure your location settings are enabled within the settings on your mobile device. Feel free to submit your entries as well, as all entries prior to count day will be removed. Safety is a top priority while out in the field. Please take note of the following items when you're out conducting the count. Please be safe and do not take any risks. Do not approach individuals and ask them if they are experiencing homelessness. Please observe and document observations only. Do not take any photos while out in the field to protect the privacy of those being counted. Please keep all locations and information confidential and do not discuss them after the count on social media or any other public forum. Stay with your teammates, be respectful of those you are counting, and if you have any problems or questions, call your deployment center captain. Once again, Safety comes first for all count participants. If an area seems too unsafe to cover, do not enter it. Mark the area on your map to show your deployment center captain when you return. Some of these areas will have special teams to cover them. If you have a true emergency, please call 911 and then notify your deployment center captain when appropriate. We will review the safety and confidentiality protocols again on the day of the count. Here are a few tips on how to prepare for the count. Wear comfortable shoes and clothing. Dress warmly. Wear a jacket, sweatshirt, raincoat, gloves, hat, etc. It's the winter time. Bring a car if possible. Bring a fully charged cell phone. Bring a flashlight. The count will happen rain, snow, or shine, so be sure to bring an umbrella or cold weather gear if necessary. And of course, be sure to get plenty of rest the night before. We will be in touch with you regarding any specific deployment location information, as well as reminders as we approach the day of the count. Please feel free to contact us at the listed email or phone number with any questions. Thank you in advance for your participation in the 2024 Point in Time Count. Please encourage your friends, family, and colleagues to join us in this year's count by directing them to the volunteer registration link. We couldn't do this without you, and we look forward to seeing you.